and for the promise word which God put in my heart uh, that comes uh, from Psalm chapter 50 and verse 15. It's a familiar verse, but God spoke to me in a new way as I uh, prayed and meditated as what I should share with all of you this uh, midnight hour. Uh, Psalm 50 and verse 15 says, and call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you. God says the second half of this year, the new month of July 2024, God says, I will deliver you and you will glorify me. There are, we all are in a different situation for uh, where we just want deliverance because we are sinking down. We were sinking down like India was sinking down yesterday in the T20 World Cup final. 2024 World Cup final between India and South Africa. You know, at the end of 14th over, the 14th and 15th over, second half of the 14th over and the 15th over, 14th over ball by Kuldeep Yadav, 15th over by Aksar, uh, uh, by Aksar Patel. In eight deliveries, South Africa hit six boundaries, three fours and three sixes. And the equation out of the 15th over was 30 of 30 balls. And all cricket fans knew it was almost over. And that's when, uh, in a worldly way, Captain Rohit Sharma enacted Psalm 50-15 in a worldly way. For him, Bumrah was the god. He threw the ball to Bumrah. Bumrah, deliver us. And Bumrah bowled a tight bow over. And then the next time he came to bowl, he removed the dangerous Marco Janssen and the rest is history. India won a World Cup after 13 years. And I was especially thrilled because the 2007 World Cup, I remember watching it while, uh, not live, sorry. And Ivan was pregnant with Natasha. Uh, this was September of 2007 and Dale was a little boy and we both watched. And now I was again watching it with my son, my now son, uh, 20 uh, years of age. Uh, so it was a super thrill moment. And I also celebrated a little bit like Rohit Sharma. But leave that celebration aside and let's come back to this verse. And I, for the first time, I read the rest of Psalm chapter 50. And I it underlined what is true of throughout scripture. You know, uh, what is true of, uh, what is true is that we know uh, the favorite verse, but we don't read up and below. And what I saw from the rest of the verse actually clearly spoke to me and they are the conditions. So what are the conditions of, for this promise to be fulfilled in our life? First is, uh, uh, first is uh, remember the judge God. Remember the judge God. Uh, Psalm chapter 50 was written by a man called Asaph, who was a worship leader in the tabernacle choir which David established. We read about him in 1 Chronicles chapter 6. 31, 32, 39, and uh, David and Asap were both skilled musicians. Asap at one point in time was even called as a prophet or a seer in 2 Chronicles 29 and verse 30. And Asap had such an influence on the people of Israel that there were people who called themselves as children of Asap. Uh, I don't think they were biological children, but they wanted to worship, lead in worship or worship God like Asap. Uh, and we read about that in First Chronicles 25, 1 Chronicles 25.1 and other verses. And Asap wrote uh, at least 12 Psalms. And the first time he wrote a Psalm was in Psalm chapter 50. And Asap was a person who concentrated on, uh, who was asking questions of, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking about unanswered prayer, which is a very familiar uh, topic for us. Uh, unfulfilled promise, another fulfilled, another familiar topic for us, uh, and unpunished evil. So this is this is what Asap is talking about in his Psalms. Okay, unanswered prayer, unfulfilled promise, unpunished evil, and he uh, uh, begins his Psalm by talking, inviting us to remember the Judge God. If you read verse three, verse four, verse five, and verse six. It says, uh, uh, verse 6, let me read verse 6, the second part. God himself is judge. Uh, and then verse 4 says, uh, he calls to the heavens above, to the earth, that he may judge his people. 
Okay, God will call, answer us in the day of our trouble when we acknowledge him as judge. He is not just a cute, loving God. He's not like a teddy bear who, whom we can cuddle. He's also a he's also a judge. The Bible talks about it. Even in this lovely, lovely promise about that, the Bible underlines the fact that God is judge. So when, when we need deliverance from our enemies, it could be a a, a hard taskmaster of a boss in your company or a, someone around you is giving you a tough time and you want deliverance, you know, remember that God is the judge and you acknowledge that you are the judge and you will bring justice to me and you will deliver me at the right time. Not just that is a God who does not have a need. You, you, not only you acknowledge the God who does, who's a judge, and second, and very importantly, this is the truth that we don't hear stressed in modern pulpits, is a God who does not have a need. Read uh, Psalm chapter 58 to 13. And it says, you know, if you just read through that, uh, th this portion of scripture, uh, you know, you keep reading. Uh, okay, since one of you read from verse 8. It's very, very important. Romans, uh, uh, sorry, Psalm 58. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your yes. burnt offerings are continually before me. Hmm. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. Okay. For every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not, would, I would not tell you. For the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or do I or drink the blood of the goats, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your works to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. What God is saying is you think you can, thank you, Cynthia, uh, you think you can offer me animals and birds as if I need animals and birds. God says, I don't need the animals and birds. I don't need uh, all the sacrifices you're making to me. I don't need all the money you're trying to give me. You can't bribe me, God says. I have everything I need. If I don't have everything, I, I have everything. You know, I don't have a need. If I have a need, I wouldn't be God. So that's something we need to understand about God. God doesn't have a need. So we acknowledge that about God. There is nothing that we can add to God, nothing we can delete from God. But God is in our life because of he loves us and he wants a relationship with us. So when we understand that about God, there's not, there's no way I can bribe this God. There's no way I can actually, uh, you know, uh, do anything to add to God's value. God is God and nothing which I do, you will change anything about him. You know, when we acknowledge that, that's when God will deliver and God, God will deliver us. Don't tell, don't tell God, I've given you a sacrifice. I've lived a holy life. I've run away from temptation. I've done this so much for you. I, I, I'm in full-time ministry. You know, I did so much for my local church. So you deliver me. No, that's not the way it is. You know, there's nothing we can do to add any value to God. So that's something we must acknowledge. And that is another condition. And then thirdly, and I want to finish with, uh, uh, mention this quickly, 14a and 23a of Psalm chapter 50 offer a sacrifice of... Sacrifice of thanksgiving. Why is why is the phrase sacrifice of thanksgiving mentioned? You know, it's not saying a token thank you to God for all the deliverances that He has done in your life. God is not. God has already delivered you from so many things, uh, from sin, uh, from a tough situation. When you just hit the rewind button of your life, you'll know the many times God actually delivered you. When God actually has already delivered you, you know, have you taken time to Thank him. And that will open the door for more such deliverances in a greater, grander scale. And not a token thank you, but a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Can you wake up half night and say thank you to God? Uh, you know, there are some people, I, I, I'm sure all of us do favors for different people. And uh, when somebody profusely thanks us, and we know that that, that thank you to us 
is coming from the bottom of their heart, you know, that's when we are really moved and that is very memorable for us. And maybe we want to do something more for that person. You know, God is not like us in that sense. In fact, there's a place in Psalm 50 itself, it says, God is not like us. God is very different. But then the Bible's consistently says here twice, verse 14, verse 23, that we must offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. When we thank God, it should it will come with a, some kind of sacrifice, maybe a, 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 a sacrifice of sleep, maybe a, a, a sacrifice of something where we, where, where through that sacrifice, we say a special thank you to God. And then finally, uh, fulfill your vows and live holy. Verse 14b, uh, it's talking about holiness. In fact, it talks about how, what God will do to evil people. Can we read just verse 14 and we will close at 14. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the most high. Okay. Whatever we promise God in the past, fulfill it. And there was a time when uh, at the age of 13, I committed my life a full-time ministry in a camp. And I was pretty serious about that commitment. It was not something which I just uh, conveniently forgot about. So I often would even think about it. And then when the opportunity came, you know, uh, I jumped right back to full-time ministry in 2008. And even before that, uh, okay, right after Bible college uh, uh, from 2001, you know, uh, God gave me the grace to fulfill my promise. So what are the promises that you made to God? Those promises Ask him grace so that you will fulfill. And it is in that context, God says, you call unto me and I will deliver you. Uh, in fact, there is uh, there are more things, 16 to 22. Uh, uh, the, the, the Bible talks about living a holy life in, in Psalm chapter 50. So uh, wait, let's read verse 21. Psalm 50 and verse 21. These things you have done and I have been silent. You okay. thought that I was one like yourself, but you now thought, I rebuke thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. You thought I was one like you. You know, there are many, that, that's where we make a mistake. We think God is like us, but the message of the Bible is God is unlike us. We have cultic false teaching which says we are like gods. That is nothing can be a bigger rubbish than that. God is unlike us. So we are full of holes and he's holy. And the call from Psalm 50 is that we must be holy. And when we are holy and when we remember the judge, when we remember that God does not have a need, when we offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, when we fulfill our vows, when we understand we serve a holy God and therefore we, stop, we reject evil and we become holy, enabled by his grace. That's when... We call unto him on the day of trouble and he will deliver us. Uh, you know, the uh, Rohit Sharma in the press conference uh, uh, said, uh, somebody must have said, uh, good things happen to good people. And Rohit Sharma chuckled and said, so you're calling me good? Uh, and I, I think he was basically acknowledging that India won because uh, it was a narrow escape. They should have lost and it was the grace of God. Now, uh, I want to tell you, something today, you know, that if you would just say, Lord, according to your promise in Isaiah, in Psalm 50 and verse 15, Lord, I, I will, I'm calling upon you today because I need a deliverance and I believe you're going to give me an answer and you will deliver me. So shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for this familiar promise from Isaiah 50, 15, Lord, in the day of Psalm. Trump, uh, uh, in Psalm 50, 15, Lord, call unto me in the day of trouble and Lord, we do expect trouble in this month, in this coming month. Lord, we don't say that just because you joined the month and midnight prayer of G formation, there will be no trouble for the rest of the year. There could be trouble. There will be trouble. In this world, you will face tribulation, you said. Lord, in First Thessalonians 3.3, 3, you said you're destined for, uh, uh, for tribulations. You're destined for trouble. Lord, that's the word you use, destined, First Thessalonians 3.3. 3. Lord, when it comes lord we we know we can call on you in and when we call on you you will deliver us oh lord the deliverance is dependent on you lord those some deliverances are dramatic some deliverances are in a way we can't even understand we can't even call that as a deliverance in a human way but it's still deliverance because the you are with us and lord we thank you lord lord i i believe that you're you're going to do a great 
act of deliverance for us this month and for the rest of the year yeah. and for the rest of our lives, oh Lord. Yeah. Deliverance from sin, deliverance yeah. from Satan, yeah. deliverance yeah. from stubborn habits, deliverance yeah. from evil people around who have given us a raw deal all their, all our lives. Yes. You are going to yes. deliver us, oh Master. Lord, deliverance from our own self-doubts and deliverance from our own, Lord, demons that we have been carrying. Deliverance from the monkey on our back, oh Lord, which is pulling us down, which is pulling us down to our past life. Oh Lord, you're going to deliver us. Thank you that you are a delivering God and we acknowledge you as judge. We say that we can't add anything to you, oh Master. We offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving, a thank you, which will cost us. We want to say that we want to give that to you this month, oh Lord. We thank you. We are going to run away from evil. Our comparison is not the next believer. Lord, we are not going to say I am more holy than this person in this church who is doing this, who is doing that. Our 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 measure of holiness is you and when we when we compare ourselves to you we find that you are so different from us and we need to be holy and we need to look at you and lord become more and more like jesus every second of our life the second half of this month uh, second half of, the, of this year and this month i pray that we will become more and more like jesus bless Everyone, oh Lord, bless Lord Trijani, bless Amy, bless Supreme, bless Patricia, bless Chandrani, bless uh, Lord Sureka, bless this uh, person who's joined us anonymously, bless Talita, bless Hannah, bless Jaziel, bless Cynthia, Lord, bless Sanjay, bless uh, Kevin, bless Dennis, bless uh, Sister Rita, bless Rupa, bless Sunny, bless Dixon, bless Vikas, bless Anu, bless uh, Jacobson, bless uh, Merce, Sister Mercia. Bless Sarah, uh, bless Ivan, Lord, bless everyone, O oh Lord, even uh, Sam and uh, Namrata, uh, AJ, Sarah, O oh Lord, thank you for everyone who's joined us. And I pray that you'll, Lord, intervene in their situation as they're crying out to you for deliverance. I pray that you will, Lord, hear their cry and you will deliver them and they will glorify you, O oh Lord. They will, they will use this time when you have delivered them as an occasion for testimony. This yeah. testing time when you're going to intervene in the life and deliver them, that will be an occasion for testimony, O Master. We thank you. I pray that all of us will return back to Psalm chapter 50 and I read that full Psalm and not just focus on that one promise verse in 15. Lord, let us read Psalm 50 fully and Lord, embrace its full message and inherit the promise, O Lord. We thank you. In Jesus Christ, name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you for your patience. It's such a joy to have.